Hey guys, today we are going to take a look at the standard prices. Luckily, standard has gotten much more cheaper and way more affordable recently due to the masterpieces. But let's go over the current prices of the sets in standard. There are seven of them beginning fr from Battle for Zendikar. You got Ogamog, the Ceaseless Hunger at $24 and Gideon Ally of Zendikar at 19 so obviously the tier 1 deck is A for Marvel. The deck is putting up fantastic results online and in real life tournaments as well. It is dominating FNM. And it is tier 1. I mean it is the exact definition of tier 1. Could a ban be incoming? Probably not. The reason I feel like they cannot ban this card is they banned too many already. They banned Emiko. Banning another Adrazi would probably not be good for Standard, although it is what's needed. The problem with Standard currently, it's very stale, and you ban one deck, another be deck becomes Tier 1. But the Tier 1 decks are just very, very strong. One of the solutions is not to continue, the solution is not to continue to ban cards, the solution is to make stronger cards. So if Amaket had stronger cards, we wouldn't really need to worry about something like A for Work Marvel because we could maybe play something more aggro or if we had stronger zombies. So A for Work Marvel, although it did not win the Pro Tour Amaket, it is the strongest card, therefore the most expensive card in Battle for Zendikar fits in that deck. Next we have Kalidus at $16, almost $17 from Oath of the Gatewatch. There's not much else to talk about. You do have Nyssa, Voice of Zendikar at seven and Chandra Flamecaller at seven as well. So overall, like one of the interesting speculations long-term may be the Manlands. The Manlands are relatively inexpensive right now. And once they rotate out, they will be even cheaper than they are today. Manlands have always been very good. You only have to look at Celestial Colonnade as well as Creeping Tar Pit to realize that they do have the potential to hold their price should they see play in the Eternal formats. But Oath of the Gatewatch, I don't like boxes of this, but Fat Packs are very interesting because they have full art waste. And should waste become more relevant in the future, which these, it's very much a cycle. The minus one, minus one counters eventually got reused, recycled, and then that meant all the old cards that had minus one, minus one counters, mostly from Shadowmore, went up a lot in price. I could see this exact scenario happening with Waste. Waste is a very unique type of land, and it's only really found in Oath of the Gatewatch. I don't know if there's promotional versions of it or will there be in the future. I'm sure that there will be reprints of Oath of the Gatewatch cards, maybe the lands themselves. But right now, very interesting in terms of long-term eternal value. Moving on to Shadows over Innistrad. This has been on sale Dave and Adams just had a sale on it. You could get fat packs for $22, $23. I believe you can get boxes of this for $80, $82.50. My local game store is trying to liquidate to prepare for our devastation. And they are selling it for $80 with tax. So $80 cash. The Relentless Dead is a mythic. The Nahari is a mythic. The Archangel is a mythic, meaning all three of your cards over $10 are mythics. Therefore, it is highly unlikely you get something. The average value of a booster pack is very low. You typically want to see non-mythics in at least one of these slots over $10. But as we have seen from Over the Gatewatch, as well as Battle for Zendikar, it's very difficult for a are rare to be over $10 today uh, in today's standard environment. I do, my, my feeling is MTG finance is pretty much dead in standard, but if you wanted to actually play standard, this is a great format for you, especially if you're more kitchen table. 
if you are playing kitchen table, then buying a fat pack for $23 of Shadows over Anistrad, that's the best, right? I used to pay close to $40 a fat pack uh, during Oath of the Gatewatch and Battle for Zendikar. Now, the fat packs, those fat packs are a little unique in the four art land stacks. But now I can have the same form of entertainment with the newer sets for relatively no money at all. All right, so Eldritch Moon, we have the Liliana, the Last Hope, Grim Flare, and wow, I'm a cool, actually is below $10 now. Makes sense. But most of these are mythics minus collective brutality, which is a non mythic, it is the black one, it is the black collective. Liliana, the Last Hope, is the most valuable card in standard. So if you were to buy a box and you were trying to get back your money, like, None of these boxes will really get you there, but it is semi-possible lately on at Last Hope. You would need to pull a foil and then like some other good cards. But it's a great card. I don't know if it's going to tank hard. Typically, a standard card like Lily, I just don't see why people would play Lily on at Last Hope over Lily on at the Veil. Now, Lily on at the Veil, it's much stronger in most most circumstances, and I've seen decks that play both Liliana of the Veil and Liliana of the Last Hope, but I've never seen a deck that just plays Last Hope over Veil, given Veil's power level is insane. So, I don't know. This is probably going to be one of those cards that will tank into Oblivion should rotation happen, and you will be able to pick them up for a very good price. Grim Flare, on the other hand, is an interesting one. I think most of its price is based on eternal playability anyway. So next we go to Kaladesh, where we have Torrential Gale Hulk, which is up and down. It's a very interesting, unstable, volatile card. And Chandra, Torch of Defiance. So those are your $20 cards. And then you just have Mythics, right? You have Mythics and land. See, Healy is no longer a $20 card. It's pretty much you hit a Masterpiece and you have to hit the correct Masterpiece. You can't just hit any Masterpiece or you're not going to break even in your box. These boxes are... The value, the expected value is very volatile and that's not something that you should... It's something that will encourage people to buy singles because... Yes, vault opening packs is really fun, but unless you're drafting or playing sealed with packs, today's standard, I was just watching a video of Tolarian Community College where he tells people not to, he did a little skit with Magic the Amateur, where he pretty much tells people do not open packs unless you're drafting or playing sealed or having additional use or additional value from it. Open a pack and expecting to get anything close to what you paid for it, not going to happen. Sitting on packs of these, not going to happen. I know people want to point at Innistrad booster. I have Innistrad booster boxes. I have a case. No, I have four boxes close to, I don't know, four boxes and then one box that is like open but has some random uh, booster packs. Innistrad and Odor, those boxes had value because not much of it was printed in comparison to today. One of the biggest problems is the print supply from RTR and beyond is just massive. You go to any game store, they have RTR. You go to Dave and Adams, they have RTR. You go to anywhere online, they have RTR. Go on eBay. There's too, there's too many people with RTR for any price. I mean, it's, it's going to take forever to break $100. Anyway. A for Revolt. So interesting enough, the third most expensive card is an uncommon. You typically almost never see this. You have Heart of Kinrin and Walking Ballista. So although you looking at the prices, you you might be like, oh, these are not twenty dollar cards, like Kaladas. However, they are not. You have a Mythic, you have a Rare, and then most importantly, you have an uncommon. The value here is spread more evenly because the value is spread among the uncommon and that's very, very good for the expected value of a set. 
you want a lot of valuable in common, and that's the way to do it. Like if you know a card is going to be valuable, maybe don't print it as a rare or a mythic. Maybe print it as an uncommon. I know people say, "Oh, that message was draft. That message was sealed." But Magic Gathering local game stores are facing a real issue here, and the real issue is no matter what gets banned, you just have a tier one deck. A for Work Marvels is a dominant deck. There's no other way for me to say it. It's more dominant than the deck they just banned with Sahili Raw. It is more dominant than the deck they banned with Emical. Well, I guess it's the same deck. <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, it's more dominant than the Smuggler Copter decks. So at the end of the day, they can keep continue to ban stuff. They can ban A for Work Marvel, which would have been correct. That meant they did not have to ban Emical. And they don't have to ban the Ceaseless Hunger either, which they might target ban. One of the more interesting things to know about Armor Cat is you have Gideon on Trials, Lily, and Ronos, and Nyssa. These prices are a tiny bit old, but you will probably not see many cards over $10 in this set in Armor Cat. Armor Cat, power level wise, is weaker than either Kaladesh or Aether Revolt. Aether Revolt mainly being Fatal Push. Fatal Push being that one strong card. But when you take a look at, you know, Oath of the Gatewatch, that was a very strong set with the Adrazi. They did ban Eye of Ugin in Modern, so it's no longer as strong in Modern. But still a very good deck in uh, Legacy and Vintage. Maybe it's... I've heard that it's like a Tier 1 deck in Modern. I just I haven't seen it since uh, Adrazi Winter. Like, I don't see people playing it anymore after Eye is banned. But that's just my local game stores. Anyway, it seems to be a pattern of, okay, this deck is the strongest deck. Instead of making stronger cards to compete with this Aether Work Marvel deck, we will just ban it. And I would be very scared for Death Shadow, and I would be very scared for Aether Work Marvel. That's why when you look at Aether Work Marvel, it is not the most expensive card in Standard. I believe it's because there's some speculation that it will get banned. And the same can be said about Death Shadow. Death Shadow, although it's recently been reprinted, should be higher than the currently price point is. But with all the bannings, I mean, we, there's so many bannings going on. Uh, the Guardian was banned, taking down the whole Sahili deck. Emiko was banned. Copter was banned. Even <laughs> Reflecting Mage. That was kind of a reflector. Yeah, Reflecting Mage. Reflector Mage right, was banned, and you just have this concept that whatever becomes tier one will take a hit because you got to keep standard diverse. Anyway, that's it, guys. Talk to you guys later. Leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.